of some significance of the both dimensional kind. You enter a realm of spirit, of sight and sound and mind. Your radio is a cosmic doorway and your psyche begins to spark. When you tune in to Gary and the sun and night dreams after dark. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark wants to give a big shout out to all the truckers that listen to our show. Coming to you from some far point station, like a cosmic tumbleweed, both north and south of the Pleiades, here's your host, Gary Anderson. That is me, and I hate to say it, probably in the next week or two, I'm going to start hearing that at night and during the day where I live. That thunder, I tell you what, this year I got a funny feeling in the Pacific Northwest, we're going to get hammered. You know, today it was in the news, and I've been predicting this now for a long time, that the U.K. was going to have its worst winter ever. Now their weather bureau is saying that they expect the worst winter, the coldest winter, well, in the last 30 years is going to hit. I tell you, it's earth changes. I, the, the water is not uh, being warmed up from the equator and making it to the uh to, well, up to by the UK because all the cooling of the ice cubes melting in Antarctica is affecting everything. Anyway, guys, how you doing? Good, really good. Yeah. So all this strange stuff, stuff out there, you know, like little people. I do feel that you are getting pictures of them. Do I feel that, you know, maybe they're living out in the forest on a regular basis? I don't know. I got a funny feeling maybe they're coming and checking us out, you know, through a portal or something. That's my feeling. But who am I? I'm just a talk show host. Yeah, that could be true. All very could be possible. You know, another factor, too, these aliens could uh, project th- the size that they want us to see them in also. That's a very good that's a very good theory, because. That's a very good possibility because I've actually seen pictures when I've taken and the Bigfoots as well. Because when I've taken a look at some of the pictures and I see some of the beans, some are very human looking. But then, then you have these like miniature Bigfoots. They're kind of running around with them, like they're on one big happy family. So we often wonder, well, where are the Bigfoots sleeping? And everything? Maybe they just shrink down to a small size like that and go under a stump. With the rest of them. Or they so tr- I don't know. <laughs> or they shape shift into a gray. Yes, I've seen the shape shifter too. It's interesting. Yeah. But you know, I'm going to say this. Think about all the reports of the size of the UFOs that's being reported for the last 10 years or more. They're huge. We're talking the size of a Walmart store or a football field. Big, thick, huge. Now, why would some creature four feet tall need something the size of a Walmart store? I mean, unless they got 10,000 of these little grays or whatever they are. Why? In fact, they could even be blues. We call them blues. Okay. Maybe they're sad. But think about it. Maybe it's because those big ships they're seeing, 
the creatures are 20 feet tall. Oh, that'd be scary. <laughs> yeah. For, I, I, I actually know somebody has seen these entities, and they were in a very interdimensional mode where average people couldn't see them, but she could. She could see uh, several sized species of them milling around a parking lot where she worked. And uh, I would just happen to be on the phone with her when all this took place and validated some of the stuff she was talking about. So, Without mentioning anybody's amazing. name, what what did she see? What did they look like? How did they act, uh, Sam? Some of them were gray. Some of them, and, and the very detailed description of them, they, some of them were wearing clothes, and there were some smaller beings, and then they were just milling about, and they had real tall ones, and... It looked like a expedition of it looked like a group of people, but it maybe the cantina bar from Star Wars, you know, where you talk about all these different beings. They're all milling about in this parking lot, waiting, and this was around the time of the Blood Moon, you know. So it's like it's almost like they were waiting for a ship to pick them up, maybe to observe something on our planet. However, she kept looking, and then her attention towards them attracted the attention of two others that came up to her window on her car and started, uh, you know, smiling at her and stuff like that. But uh, And she could see all that. But then two two of them, they weren't the same ones. They weren't the grays. They actually looked annoyed. <clears throat> and they could kind of conveyed the thought, well, this isn't supposed to happen. Humans aren't supposed to see us. You know, it's like... A standard operating procedure just got broken, and she broke the the standard and was able to see them. So they weren't like mad; they were just upset that the system didn't work, and she was able to see them. Well, maybe they maybe their cloaking uh, equipment wasn't working right, or maybe she could see something in the, a different range. Of, yeah, she does. Yeah, and that has special abilities. Yeah, she has many special abilities and uh and i'm in close association with her on some of these outings and things like that and i kind of she's kind of like my psychic barometer for sometimes when we're investigating things because she has that very intense ability to see things so that would be so scary i mean was she was she nervous when she seen these things or what was she like you were talking to her no, she was just anxious to tell me about it. I mean, she's sitting in the parking lot and seeing all this happen. And then, uh, so she's frantically texting me on, you know, we're not communicating over the phone. Yet. We're just texting and going back and forth. And then, and then I, I told her, I says, text, text them about where they, I forgot what the question was. It was something that I wanted her to text them about to try to convey a thought to them. Uh, I, and I wish I could remember what it was precisely, but whatever the question was, it really cut them. It really cut them off short because because they didn't want to proceed any further with this. So she just she, they, she got a bad feeling from it, you know that, you know she wasn't supposed to see them. Okay, and then she left. Well, that was a good you know? move. She left because she could have been like them them cattle in Oregon. That's Ooh. not the first time. I think there was one other instance where she actually saw this another being around that. I don't know if that particular area where where she worked just happened to be a vortex area from long ago or a portal area or, you know, one of those thinning veils that exist. It could have been a cemetery area at one time that actually accounts for some of this thinning veil uh, stuff. You know, I don't know what was there before. Maybe it could have been an ancient Indian burial ground that induces some of this interdimensional vision. Well, don't forget, you know, years ago, before the turn of the century, a lot of times people weren't buried in cemeteries. You know, down uh, by Auburn, when they were building the horse track, the new one, they mm-hmm. f- they found bones, uh, you know, from American natives there. And they had to, you know, recover them and whatever they had to do. But I, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, you could be out anywhere, and who knows? Maybe it, it could have been a cemetery at one time. Who knows? I mean, th- records get lost. 
Yeah, we yeah. had an interesting. Uh, we were you were talking about ghosts earlier in buildings, and uh, I've had my share of those kind of experiences too. But we also went to a cemetery, and uh, hold on, we went to the Carbonado Cemetery. I don't know if you're familiar with Carbonado. Oh, yeah, I've been to Carbonado so many times you wouldn't believe it. Well, then you're aware of the fact that there was a lot of coal mining operations at the turn of the last century, and there were many explosions, and just oodles of them had passed away, like 19 at one time or 31 at another time, and I think over a 30-year period, over 100 and some odd of them died you know, from the coal mine explosions. So they have a memorial up there, and we just happened to be milling, and out, milling about there, she could actually feel in communicating with her, some of the ones that were still there. And I think the ones that are have died traumatically sometimes linger. And it just so happened that we wanted to go down and get some pizza down in Wilkerson at this place. And so we get in the car to drive back down the hill. And she turns around and says, oh, we got, got a visitor in the car hanging with us. So what do you mean? I says, well... The visitor's saying, who's Paul? What do you mean, who's Paul? And says, the entity wants to know who Paul is. And I couldn't figure that out. You know, I knew some Pauls that I work with, and I knew some Pauls in the town I live, and I was racking my mind until we got to Wilkerson and parked. So I couldn't come up with a solution about who Paul was. So we're sitting in the, the pizza parlor, and it's an old building itself that's been renovated. I don't want to mention the name of it. I know exactly where you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know the place. Well, it's got like three three booths in the front. So we sat at one of the booths, and of course in the back there's a long bar area. Where people, it's a very nice place where people could sit. And so I said, okay, I'll be right back. So the restroom's in the back area. So I went back there. And as I came back towards the booth, there was a one person that noticed me. And as I sat down, all of a sudden, this guy comes up. He says, hey, Sam, how's it going? I said, oh, pretty good. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a clue about who this guy is. And he's saying, well, yeah, he's mentioned a couple of things. So I'm literally, I'm, I feel embarrassed. I think maybe I'm getting old or something because I can't remember people or people's names or anything. So he says, uh, Debbie's doing pretty good. And all of a sudden, it clicks to me who Debbie is. It's a musician that helped me i did a video youtube video a long time ago almost a decade where i used her uh, as a bumper music on the uh, one of her songs on one of my youtube videos with her permission and uh so it says yeah daddy's doing pretty good i'm going and then he, i'm going who is this guy and then he says oh you know i'm paul <laughs> oh my god talk about the hairs just stood up in the top. I mean, both of us were had our like looking at him with our, our mouths dropping. I said, "Oh my God!" I says, "The spirit in." I mean, there was confirmation there. But she knew that was confirmation that she wasn't making this stuff up. There somehow the spirit knew. Maybe it was in contact with the spirit that dwelt inside that building, and was kind of wondering. Hey, there's a connection with Sam and this one person. Well, who's Paul? And was trying to make an inquiry before I got there. Now, isn't that strange? It is. And Carbonado is kind of strange. But, you know, the cemetery there, have you ever noticed there's, the, 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 like, the graves are almost to the point of the road? Very close to it. Yeah, I mean, there was one I remember the last time I was there. It looked like it was, I mean, if the bank deteriorated anymore, it, it would be, it, it, somebody's legs would be sticking out towards the the road. Oh, yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of those graves, of course, are, uh, you know, they have concrete slabs above them. So I don't know, that ground is probably pretty hard. They couldn't probably go down a full uh, six feet to put a casket in. I'm sure some of them are above ground. Yeah, I see a lot of that at that other cemetery in Wilkerson. There's, they look like they're all above ground graves from that standpoint. Probably is. And you know, just before that state park up there, you know, uh, up by the river up there, uh, you know, you go over that one lane bridge and you keep going, and then you run into the park. 
Oh, the Mount Rainier Park, uh, the Carbon River Park. Yeah. Just before there, there's an old cemetery I ran into years ago.